Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. We have x squared plus xy equals 15 and 4y squared plus 3xy is equal to 34. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, even though not both methods may be conclusive, but I'll try my best. Okay, let's start with the first method. The first method is kind of like more general because, you know, certain scenarios do not always apply. So we're going to uh, use a very special, um, well, actually, it's the other way around. The second method applies to special scenarios. First method is more general. Okay, great. That's what I was trying to say. And here's how the first method works. First of all, we realize that uh, x squared is quadratic. xy is also quadratic because imagine you replace y with x, you would get x squared, right? So everything pretty much is quadratic on the left-hand side. I'm talking about variables. So that means this is a homogeneous system, right? What's that supposed to mean? It means that y over x or x over y can be turned into another variable and that's going to make it easier to solve. We're going to come up with a single equation in a single variable. You get the idea? Okay, let's proceed. So I'm going to go ahead and call probably let's use kx. So I'm going to replace y with kx which means that y over x is k. Don't get me wrong, k is not a constant, it's just another variable. Okay, make sense? But, but of course, we hope it's a constant so we can kind of plug it back in and solve it. So if you replace y with kx in, you know, three different places, you should be getting something like this. x squared plus x times kx equals 15 and 4 times k squared x squared plus 3x times kx equals 34. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify both of these equations. The first one is x squared plus kx squared equals 15. And the second one is 4k squared x squared plus 3kx squared equals 34. Now, from here, we're going to go ahead and factor out x squared times 1 plus k equals 15. x squared times 4k squared plus 3k is 34, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and divide these equations. You know, the motivation behind it will get rid of x. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Let's go ahead and simplify those. Now, notice that we ended up with a single equation in k. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. 60k squared, I'm doing this first, plus 45k equals, and I'm doing the second, 34 plus 34k. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but I wanted to keep the quadratic term on the left-hand side. Let's bring this in, 60k squared plus 45 minus 34, that's going to be 11k minus 34 equals 0. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if I could simplify this, right? at least divide by something to make the number smaller, but that's not possible. That's okay. We can go ahead and try to solve it using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 121. Now here, notice that c is negative. When a is positive and c is negative, that means we're going to have real solutions because they're opposite. b squared minus 4ac, that's going to turn into a plus sign. 60 and 34. I don't think there's a nice way to simplify this. Like I was hoping to get a common factor, but 11 squared does not share anything with 4 times 60 times 34. So that's going to be pretty crazy to do. That's why this method will be incomplete. But let me tell you, once you get a nice value, which I'm hoping you will, from here for k, it's going to be a rational number. Then you're going to substitute that. Let's say uh, y is equal to kx. When you plug it in, when you know the value of kx, or sorry, when you know the value of k, uh, the only unknown here is x, so you can solve for x. And of course, you can solve for y as well by using this equation. So that should give you the x and y values. Make sense? I hope it does, because that's pretty much what the first method is all about. I was, again, hoping to get something nice. I hope I didn't make any mistakes, and I hope the numbers are 
nice enough, so we'll get a good answer with the second method. That's what I'm hoping for, okay? Let's see what happens, I don't know. So here's how the second method works. And you expect that to be very different from the first, right? Of course. So let's rewrite our system. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Because of the way the equations are given, again, this only applies to certain scenarios, which is an example of this one. And it is by adding these two equations. Now, you might be questioning, like, why are we adding them? You'll see now. If you add these equations, you get x squared plus 4xy plus 4y squared, which is a perfect square. And that's just perfect. Of course, it's been arranged that way. And in that sense, we can call this a homemade problem. If I remember correctly, I came up with the idea. So if you see someone else making the same problem, chances are they copied me, but I guess everybody copies each other, so that's kind of fair, right? Anyways, whatever. So, what do I mean by a perfect square? Here's what I mean. If you expand a plus b squared, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is exactly what it is. If you look at it carefully, hopefully, you're going to realize that this is x plus 2y quantity squared. And that's equal to 49, and it's just awesome. You know why? because the right-hand side is also a perfect square and everything is perfect, right? Everything is awesome. Great. So from here, we get two solutions. X plus 2Y is equal to 7 and X plus 2Y is equal to negative 7. Nice. This kind of linearizes the problem, which means we can substitute X and replace X with 7 minus 2Y in one of these equations, doesn't matter which one, Let's use the top one because it has smaller numbers, so that's probably going to be a little easier. Now let's go ahead and replace x with 7 minus 2y. And that's okay to replace x with something, doesn't matter. So y is going to be multiplied by 7 minus 2y. Again, I'm hoping that something good will come out of this because that's what I thought about when, it, when I came up with this problem. I made up the numbers so that they would look good, okay? So let's expand 49 minus 28y plus 4y squared plus 7y minus 2y squared equals 50. At least the numbers are much, much smaller than the other one, right? I mean, the first method was like kind of crazy because the numbers were too large. So 2y squared and then we get minus 21y. 49 minus 15 is 34. We still got large numbers, but I think it's manageable. 21 squared, at least I know what it is. <laughs> okay, let's set up the uh, quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 441. Did you know that? I memorized it. 21 squared minus 4 times 2 times 34. And that is 8 times 34, and I believe that's going to be less than 441 divided by 2a, which is 4. Let's find out. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 34 is 252. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. No, 200. 272, sorry about that, 272, okay. So we're gonna subtract 441 minus 272. Please, please be a perfect square, please, <laughs> beg you. So this is gonna be nine, so we're doing some arithmetic here. That's gonna be a six, and this will be a one. Yay, success, okay, I was right. So y equals 21 plus minus, the square root of 169 is 13. Yay, Houston, we have a solution. Y equals 21 plus 13 is 34 divided by 4. That will be half of 17. And if you subtract, you're going to get 8, and that will be Y equals 2. Which means that we could, have found the, we could have found these solutions, but that would probably be a little bit more painful. Now, notice that you don't have to use the equations anymore because we have an equation that ties Y into X. X equals 7 minus 2Y. And since y has the values, like for example, if y is 17 halves, that will be 7 minus 17, which is negative 10. And if uh, y is equal to 2, 7 minus 4 is just going to be a 3. Great. So we got the ordered pairs. Let's go ahead and write them as ordered pairs. If y is 17 halves, okay, it's going to look like this, negative 10 comma 17 halves, 8.5, you can also write it that way. 
and the other one is 3 comma 2. Of course, when I kind of thought about this problem, you know how I did it? Let me tell you. It's fun. So I kind of thought about two things, first of all, the left-hand side, so that I would be getting a perfect square. I knew that I was going to get a perfect square. And then I said, okay, what if x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2, because those are smaller numbers relatively. And then plug them in, and I found this. But guess what? We have another solution. So this system has two solutions. If you craft them using Desmos or any other tool, you should see the intersection points. Let me know which method you like better, okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.